Family Theater presents Marta Torrin and Terry Kilburn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, brings you Terry Kilburn in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Marta Torrin. Thank you, Charles Arlington. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to your attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. All of us spend many happy hours living in the shadow of our memories. One of my first recollections was hearing my father read to me the wonderful stories of childhood by Robert Louis Stevenson. So, tonight on Family Theatre, it's like calling on an old friend when I introduce Robert Louis Stevenson's well-remembered classic, Treasure Island. Now, as Jim Hawkins, Terry Kilburn will tell you the story of adventure, pirates, and the treasure. <laughs> I remember it all as if it were yesterday. And often at night, I awake in a sweat, my ears ringing with the angry boom of the surf, off to Treasure Island. The whole fantastic adventure began back in England, late on a bitter, foggy, frosty day after my poor father's funeral. I was down in the parlor of the Admiral Benbow Inn, with our only guest, Captain Billy Bones, a mysterious seafaring man with a livid saber cut across one cheek. Matey! Matey, more rum! But, Captain, the doctor oh, said that... I'm as weak as a woman. If the doctor hadn't bled me after my stroke, I'd be able to travel. To get away from here. Get away where they'd never find me again. Who do you mean, they? Well, all that's left of the crew that sailed with old Flint. Not... Not Flint, the famous pirate. Yes, the same. I was old Flint's first mate, I was. And I, I'm the only one that knows the place. The place? Hey, he gave it to me at Savannah when he lay dying. Gave you what? Uh, whatever they're after. And, and the seafaring man with one leg, the one you've had me keep an eye out for all this time, is he one of them? Uh, he's the worst of all. Ah, uh, matey, matey, I, I've got to have a rum. I'll, I, I'll give you a gold guinea for another noggin. I, I'd give... Uh, what's that? It was a cane. A cane tapping on the road outside. The captain sat paralyzed with fear as I went out to look. Slowly approaching the inn was a blind man, wearing a big green shade over his eyes and nose, and an old tattered sea cloak over his bent shoulders. He addressed the air in front of him as he walked toward me. Any kind friend inform a poor blind man who has lost the precious sight of his eyes in the gracious defense of his native land, where or in what part of this country he may now be. Why, sir, you're at the Admiral Benbow Inn. Uh, oh, I hear a voice, a young voice. Will you give me your hand, my kind young friend, and lead me in? I gladly, my good... Oh, oh, you're hurting me. I'll break your arm, boy, unless you take me in straight to the captain. How much? Yes, sir. Now then, boy, when we come in view of him, cry out. Here's a friend for you, Bill. Yes, sir. Here, here's a friend for you, Bill. Pooh! Sit 
swear you are, Billy Bones. If I can't see, I can hear a finger stir. Uh, business is business, Billy Bones. Hold out your left hand. Boy, take his left hand by the wrist and bring it near to my right. Like, like this? No. There. Now, that's done. Oh, he, he's gone now, Captain. Uh, Captain, what are you staring at? Uh, What's that he put in the palm of your hand? The, the black spot. It's, it's done now. I've got the black spot. But what does it mean? It means... I wait. Wait the time. Uh, the time will be written on the other side of the black spot. Uh, ten o'clock. They'll be here for me at ten o'clock. Uh, I'll do them yet. I'll be so far away from here by ten o'clock. Oh, Captain! Captain! It's your heart, Captain. I, I lie up. I am... I'm done for. Here, 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 lad, take this. Take it and, and keep, keep it. Oh. oh, mother. Mother, come quickly. The captain is dead. <laughs> Mother and I ran to the village for help, but after hearing my story, no one would come back with us to the inn. They were all afraid of the pirates, afraid of what would happen at 10 o'clock. So we returned to the inn alone. But as we approached, we saw men, pirates battering at the door of the inn. Hiding in the hedgerow by the side of the road, we watched them break the door and storm inside. But soon they emerged again. It's gone! It's that boy who took it! I wish I'd put his eyes out! Back to the ship lads. Before the revenue has come! I waited only long enough to make sure that the pirates were really gone and that my mother was all right. Then set off to hunt for Dr. Livesey, who was the one friend on earth we could always count on. I found him at last at the home of Squire Smollett. What puzzles me, Squire, is why old Pew thought that Jim had what they were after. Aye, aye. How about that, lad? Well, old Pew must have meant... This. Hmm? Oh, a small oilskin packet. Where did you get it, Jim? Well, the captain gave it to me just before he died. He told me to keep it. Hear that, Doctor? Hear that? Let's see it, Jim. Ah, sewn together very securely. We'll soon discover why. But you see, Billy Bones, uh, that was the captain's name, said Flint had given him something that the rest of Flint's old crew was after. This might be it. By gad, if it is, if it is Flint's treasure map. Treasure map? Look, the map of an island. And down in the corner... The initials J.F. That could only mean Flint. And and you think there's really buried treasure? Read for yourself, lad. Read what it says under this little cross in red ink. It says, bulk of treasure here. Jim, this man Flint was the most bloodthirsty buccaneer that ever sailed. He buried a fabulous amount of treasure. And it'll be ours, or I'm the son of a rum puncheon. Ours, Squire? Yes. Dr. Livesey, at dawn I start for Bristol, there to fit out a ship. Within three weeks, no, no, make it ten days, we'll be ready to sail. The three of us? Of course. Livesey? You shall be ship's doctor, and Jim Hawkins here. Hawkins shall be cabin boy on our voyage to Treasure Island. Actually, it was a month before we set sail aboard the schooner Hispaniola, with a company of the toughest old salts imaginable. Because it had been some years since the squire was at sea, most of the crew had been hand-picked by our ship's cook, Long John Silver. The first time I saw Long John Silver, my heart was in my throat. For wasn't he a one-legged man? And hadn't Billy Bones put me on the lookout for such a person? <laughs> but then, Long John was such an honest, hearty soul, everyone liked him. Moreover, the voyage went smoothly enough, despite the fact that everyone seemed to have learned somehow that we were on a treasure hunt. It was on the night before we were due to sight Treasure Island that I fell asleep inside the apple barrel on deck. When I awoke, it was to the murmur of voices. Peeking out, I saw Long John and a seaman named Dick sitting alongside the barrel. I was about to crawl out and join them when I heard something that made my heart jump. Well, but I... Hi, Dick. You're young, you are, but you're smart as paint. And I'll talk to you like a man. And I'll listen like one. I'm ready to join in with you, if you can give me reason why. Reason? Why, Dick, when this voyage is done, you'll be that rich you'll never have to tread a deck again. You... you really think Flint's treasure is on that island? Think, lad. 
John Silver knows it. Wasn't I old Flint's quartermaster when he took it ashore? <laughs> I'm with you, Long John, and there's my hand on it. <laughs> Didn't I say that, George Manny? That dick, I said, he'll join in with us too. Everything's ship shape, Long John. Aye. And we've got all the men we'll need. So what I want to know now is, when do we take over? When? By the powers, George Mary, I'll tell you when. After we have the treasure aboard. But why? Why, you say? I'll tell you why. Here's this squire and doctor with a map and such. I don't know where it is, do I? Well, then, I mean for them to find the stuff and help us get it aboard. Then, I'll finish with them. But uh, what will we do with them, anyhow? Well, we could put them ashore like maroons or... Cut them down like so much, Paul. Cut them down, I say. Dead men don't bite, I say. Death. That's my vote, too. When I'm in Parliament and riding in my coach, I don't want none of them coming home unlooked for. When the time comes, I say, let her rip. <laughs> Long John, you're a man. You'll say so, all of you, when the time comes. <laughs> oh, jump up like a sweet lad, Dick, and get me an apple. Yeah, Paul! Huh? Yeah, Paul! Do you hear that? Aye. We've sighted Treasure Island. In the general excitement that followed, I escaped from the apple barrel and sought out Dr. Livesey and the squire. Grim indeed were their faces when they heard my story. Well, Captain, what do we do now? It's for you to say. And I say this, Doctor. It's plain that we're vastly outnumbered. Our only hope lies in the fact that they'll let us be until the treasure is found. Well, then... We'll come to blows with them some fine day when they least expect it. Next morning, the ship was anchored as though nothing were wrong. Then, in the heat of the day, as mutiny seemed about to boil to the surface, the men were told they could have the afternoon ashore. Without reckoning the consequences, I slipped into the nearest gig and went with them. Long John's look frightened me, though. So the instant we touched land, I ran for dear life into the woods. There I wandered aimlessly, until I suddenly realized that I was being followed. It was the strangest apparition of a man I had ever seen. A shaggy, sun-blackened figure, dressed in tatters. As he flitted behind a tree, I hastily drew my pistol. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, don't shoot, I say. Don't shoot, mate. Then come out, whoever you are. Come out or I will shoot. I'm poor Ben Gunn, I am. I'm Ben Gunn. And I haven't spoke with a Christian in three years. Three years? Were you shipwrecked? The name ain't Maroon. Maroon three years ago and lived on goats since then and berries and oysters. Wherever a man is, says I, a man can do for himself. But, mate, my heart is sore for Christian diet. You, uh, you mightn't happen to have a, a piece of cheese about you now. No, I, I'm afraid not. Cheese. <gasps> oh, many's a long night I've dreamed of cheese. Toasted, mostly, and woke up again and here I were. Uh, mate, uh, who do you call yourself? Jim. Jim, Jim, Jim. Jim. I'm rich. Well, well, that's nice. Rich, rich, I says. And I'll tell you what. Jim, I'll make a man of you. Oh, you'll bless your stars that you was the first that found me. Jim, you listen to Ben Gunn. I were in Flint's ship when he buried the treasure. He and six along with him, six strong seamen. But only Flint came back to the ship. The others he left behind, dead and buried. You mean... He murdered them all? Aye. Murdered them so as they could never tell where the spot was? Aye. And now, now here's where poor Ben Gunn went afoul. Years ago, I were on another ship that sighted this island. I told them about the treasure, but we searched and found nothing. So they turned on me and left me behind with just a musket, a spade, and a pickaxe. You can stay here and find Flint's money for yourself, they said. Oh, I, I don't think I could stand that. No, just you say to your captain, Jim, Gunn is a good man, you'll say. And much of the three years he'd think upon a prayer, you'll say. But the most part of Gunn's time, this is what you'll say, the most part of his time was took up with another matter. And then you'll give him a nip, like this. And another, like this. Oh, stop, stop pinching me. Ah, it's clear to you, Jim, what Ben Gunn's been saying? No, no, not a bit of it. Oh, but that's neither here nor there. For how am I to get on board? Well, there's a boat. A boat? Made with my two hands. Keep it under the white rock. 
It'd be quite rough on the shore, not far. Huh? What's that? A cannon shot. Well, they've begun to fight. Fight, is it? And look, Cap. Look over there in the distance. Uh, the Union Jack is flying. Aye, it is a Union Jack. Flying over the stockade that old Captain Flint once built. Oh, mate, your friends has landed. No, no, it must be the pirates in the stockade. Then, well, and what would they be doing with the Union Jack? It's a Jolly Roger they'd be flying. Well, if that's the case... Aye, I... wait till nightfall and join them, man. And, uh, when you want to see Ben Gunn again... Yeah. <laughs> well, Jim, you'll know where to find him. <laughs> when night came and the noise of battle died out, I made my way to the stockade where the Union Jack still flew. It was risky business trying to convince the lookouts that I was indeed Jim Hawkins, but finally they let me in. Calm for yourself, Hawkins. I'm in command, whether at sea or ashore. And man or boy, all must abide by my discipline. I demand now to know why you up and left. Well, I'm sorry, truly I am, sir. And you can't imagine how surprised and relieved I was when I saw our flag flying over the stockade. Doctor, how did you happen upon this place? Well, Jim, I ventured ashore and came upon it by accident. We then decided we could fight them off better here. Enough of that, Doctor. I'm still waiting for Hawkins to account for himself. Jim, the captain's right. You've got to learn discipline. Well, I... Well... Perhaps even the captain will forgive me when I tell you about Ben Gunn. About who? Yes, who is Ben Gunn? A man who hates Long John Silver as much as we. He was once a member of Flint's crew, and then three years ago, another ship marooned him here. He, uh, he hinted at a lot of things. Oh, he did, eh? Well, Jim, it may turn out that we can make good use of this Ben Gunn. Ahoy there! Oh, quick, quick, that? every man to his post! Silver, sir, waiting to come on board and make terms. Captain Silver, you say? Who's he? It's me, sir, Long John Silver. The poor lads have chosen me as their captain. So here I be to offer terms. Terms, is it? Say what you have to say and be quick about it. You ain't going to let me inside, Captain Smollett. It's a two night out. Come to the point, Silver. Will at least let me stick my head in through the musket port. Now, where's the army in there? Be quick, then. I thank you, Captain. Well, there's Jim. And Doctor is Miss Harris. Point, Silver? Our point, Captain, is this. We want that treasure and we'll have it. Your point, I reckon, is that you just as soon save your lives. Which brings me to this. You have a chart, haven't you? That's as maybe. Well, you have, I know that. Now, you give us the chart to get the treasure by and stop shooting poor seamen. And we'll give you a choice. What choice, Silver? Either you come aboard along with us, once the treasure is shipped, and then I'll give you me Affy Davy to clap you somewhere safe ashore. Or if that ain't your fancy, then you can stay here you can. We'll divide stores with you, man. Man for man we'll divide. And I'll give you me Affy Davy to send the first ship I sight to pick you up. Now... Intimate terms you couldn't hope Is to find. all? Every last word by thunder. Refuse that and you've seen the last of me but musket balls. Very good. Now you'll hear me. If you'll come up one by one, unarmed, I'll engage to clap you all in irons and take you home to a fair trial in England. If you won't, I've flown my sovereign's colours and I'll see you all to Davy Jones. Will you now? Look, before another day is out, I'll stove in your old blockhouse like a rum punchin. Well, let me tell you this, Captain Smollett. Only them that die will be the lucky ones. At dawn came the murderous attack. But though vastly outnumbered, we finally forced the mutineers to withdraw, leaving behind many dead. There was little elation for us, however, for our position was still desperate, what with Captain Smollett grievously wounded and our supplies running low. All day I brooded over this, till at last I hit upon a plan, a plan which I dared not confide to the others, knowing they would forbid it. That night I stole away, located Ben Gunn's boat under the White Rock, 
and rowing out to the Hispaniola, cut her adrift. I was finally able to strand the vessel in a sheltered anchorage on the other side of the island. Then, under cover of night again, I stole back into the slumbering blockhouse, only to find myself a prisoner of the pirates. Ah, ah. So you want to know what happened, do you, Jim Orton? Well, yesterday morning in the dog walk, down came the doctor with a flag of two. Says he, Captain Silver, you're sold out. The ship's gone. The ship gone? We looked out the sea and by thunder it was. That changed everything. So the doctor and me bargained. And here we are. Stores, brandy, blockhouse, and in a manner of speaking, the old blessed business. And your friends, they've tramped. Why are you telling him all this long, John? There's some kind of trick he's being here. They themselves sent him. Not likely, George Mary. Didn't I hear the doctor call Hawkins a most ungrateful scamp for running off again? Dr. Livesey said that? Aye. They're finished with you. So shiver me, Sarge Jim. There's nothing left for you to do but join Captain Silver. Will, what have you got to say? Just this. I'm not such a fool, but that I know what I'm in for. But you're in a bad way, too. Ship lost, treasure lost, most of your men lost. Your whole plan gone to wreck. And if you want to know who did it, well, I did. What? What's this, sir? Yes. You? I was in the apple barrel the night we sighted land. And I overheard the whole plot. As for the schooner, it was I who cut her cable. So you see, the laugh's on my side. The laugh is a tie off him, George Mary. Now then, go on, boy. One thing I'll say and no more. If you spare me, bygones are bygones. And when you're all in court for piracy, I'll save those I can. Kill me, and you kill a witness who might save you from the gallows. I'll slit your throat off there. I'm Captain here, and I like the boy. Lay hand on him, and my cutlass will soon see the color of your inside. Well, uh, what's to be done with him? Shiver me, Timber, the boy's a hostage. Kill that boy? Not me, mate. He's as important to us as this. The map of my eyes. Now, what do you think of Captain Silver? He's got you the treasure map. My last hope died when I saw that it was, in truth, the treasure map. As for me, I was truly a hostage, and Long John never let me out of his sight. Next day, he even took me along under close guard as he set out to locate the buried treasure. Forty and five. Forty and six. Forty and seven. Forty and eight. Forty and... No. Look! It's gone! I... Nothing but a hole in the ground. That's our treasure. A hole in the ground. But you knew it all the time, didn't you? It's wrote on your face. This time long, John, you and that boy die. That surely would have been the end of me. Except that the next moment we were surrounded by musket fire. It was my friends come to the rescue. Soon the fight was over, and those of the pirates who had resisted capture were dead. Jim, Jim Hawkins, my oh, boy. Dr. Livesey. Thank God you've come through it all safely, Jim. Oh, but there's something I must tell you, Doctor. The treasure, it's gone. All we found was an empty hole in the ground. Oh, oh don't let that worry you, Jim. I'd never have given Long John Silver the map if we didn't already have the treasure. What? Oh, then it, it's really ours. Thanks to you. To me. It was you who overheard the mutineer brewing, and it was you who discovered Ben Gunn. Ah, oh, here he comes. <laughs> I'm poor Ben Gunn, I am. <laughs> I do Jim Hawkins pretty well, I think, yes, is you. Jim, after you told us about Ben, I hunted him out and learned that he'd transferred all the gold to a cave, and it's safe for us there at this very moment. Hey, safe in Ben Gunn's cave. And now Ben Gunn gets him a passage home. Well, right now we're all marooned. We have no ship. Oh, but we do have a ship, Dr. Livesey. She lies in the North Inlet where I stranded her. What? It, it, it won't be any trick at all to get her afloat. <laughs> Bless you, Jim Hawkins. You've saved us again. By tomorrow, we'll have that treasure stowed aboard and be away from this island. Away from this island? Away from this island. Yes. 
I remember it all as if it were yesterday, and my ears ring with the angry boom of the surf off Treasure Island. Family theater is dedicated to the homes of our nation and of the world. And its sole purpose is to remind everyone that the practice of daily family prayer will help build those virtues which are the foundation of a strong, enduring home. We try not to preach about it. For most people, a reminder should be enough, especially if it is accompanied by a story which shows dramatically that the only way for free men and free families to live is the way of faith and goodness, of love of God and of neighbor. Sometimes we do it through serious drama, sometimes through a comedy, a musical, or even a western. We feel we are successful if you enjoy our family theater stories and are inspired by them, and if you remember and act upon the thought we bring you each week. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Terry Kilburn in Treasure Island with Marta Torrin as your hostess. Others in our cast were Jane Novello, Edgar Barrier, Bill Boucher, Howard McNear, Dan O'Herlihy, and Junius Matthews. Robert Louis Stevenson's classic was adapted by Maurice Zim, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and for the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Charles Arlington expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week at this time when family theater will present Gene Raymond and Mary Anderson in The Prisoner of Zenda. Join us, won't you? Family Theater originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>